Hi, fifth graders. This is Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're going to be doing Unit 5, Lesson 14, Make Sense of Decimal Subtraction. Let's subtract decimals. So we've been adding decimals, and now we're going to figure out how to subtract them. Decide if each statement is true or false. Be prepared to explain your reasoning. Five-tenths minus one-hundredth is four-tenths. So let's think about that. These are not in the same place value, are they? And if I use my strategy from last time, five-tenths, and line up the decimal places, it's like saying 50 minus 1, that would be 49, not four-tenths. So I'm going to say that this one is false. 61 hundredths minus 2 hundredths is 59 hundredths. So I think I can use a strategy. If I add these two together, will it give me 61 hundredths? So let's try that because I don't like to subtract. I don't know about you guys, boys and girls, but subtracting is hard, harder than addition. So if I take 59 hundredths and I line up those decimal places and I add 2 hundredths to that, do I get 61? 9 plus 2 is 11, 5 plus 1 is 6, and I have 0 ones. So yeah, this one is true, and I didn't even have to subtract that time. I'm going to use the same strategy for this one, okay? So I'm going to add these two together and see if I get 1. So 0 and 7 hundredths, and 0 and 93 hundredths. 7 plus 3 is 10. 9 plus 1 is 10, and I have a 1, and I have to make sure I make a nice dark decimal point there. So I think, yes, that one is true as well. Oop, I'm going to move this away. What do you, do you use? How did you use what you know about place value to decide if the equation were true? Well, remember, we used addition, and we had to line up those decimal places. If we did subtraction, again, I still lined up the decimal place. So that's what I, how I used what I already knew about place value. I have to line up the decimal place in order for them to work, to come out right. Find the value of 2 and 26 hundredths. Explain or show your reasoning. Well, first I'm going to, I think I'm going to um, estimate, right? This was close to 2. And this is very close to 1. So my answer should be around 1. What do you think? If I use the strategy that I used in the last lesson with addition, that means I'm going to have to line up my decimal place. So 2 and 26 hundredths minus 1 and 32 hundredths. I'm going to take hundredths away from hundredths. 6 minus 2 is 4. I cannot take three things from two things, so I'm going to have to borrow one from the ones and make that a one, and then I'm carry that over here, and that makes that a 12. Now I can subtract 12 minus 3 is 9, and 1 minus 1 is 0. Then I can use that strategy that I used in the warm-up and add these two numbers together and see if I get this number. So 1 and 32 hundredths, I'm going to make sure that I line up those decimal points, and 94 hundredths. 4 plus 2 is 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Make that decimal point nice and dark, and 1 plus 1 is 2. And yes, I got 2 and 26 hundredths, so 94 hundredths is the correct way. So at this time, boys and girls, in your class, you're going to create a visual display that shows your thinking. You may want to include details such as notes, diagrams, or drawings to help you understand. So you could have drawn diagrams. If, you're, if your teacher has chart paper or, or grid paper, that would be way more helpful than drawing it on notebook paper or on loose leaf. All right, let's move on. What is the same and what is different about the strategies you used? Well, all I can say is that I made sure that I had to line up those decimal places in order for it to work, to be play, pay close attention to place value and the meaning of each digit to be able to add or subtract them. Ah, this
this student decided to draw it, right? So she drew first one, two holes and 20, one, two, three, four, five, six hundredths. And then she took out one hole. So she's subtracting one and one, two, three tenths and one, two hundredths. And what she would be left with is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundredths, no, I'm sorry, nine tenths, and four hundredths, which is the answer that we got. So if you like this method, it's a great method to use. It just takes a little bit more time. And we just talked about how the diagram shows them and how the diagram is different from using an equation. Ah, we get to play our number game again. So this time we're going to start with the number 2 to subtract with. Once we roll, we're going to write our number here. So if I roll a 3, I'm going to decide, am I going to subtract 3 tenths or 3 hundredths from the number 2? And I need to know, I need to get an answer that is closest to 1 without going over or under. Okay. We can't go under 1. So... Let us do that by going to a different page that I have that dice set up on. Let's go here. Okay, so now we're going to go to our random dice roller, and let's see what we get. One. So I'm going to record my one here, and remember we're starting with the number two this time. So I have to decide, am I going to subtract one-tenth? I mean, yeah, one-tenth or one-hundredth? And I think I'm going to subtract one-tenth. So I'm going to line up that decimal point. Zero minus zero is zero. Over here I'm going to have to borrow because I can't take one from zero, right? So I'm going to borrow one from that. Ten minus one is nine, and one minus zero is one. So now I'm left with 1 and 9 tenths. Okay, so let's go back to our dice roller and see what I'm going to get next. 5. Let's try 5 this time. Go back. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to write 5. That's the number I rolled. Am I going to take 5 tenths away? Or am I going to take five hundredths? Uh, five is a big number, and last time that we played this game, I got in trouble with that. So I'm going to say that I'm going to take away five hundredths this time. So that means I have zero ones, zero tenths, and five hundredths. So to help me with that, I'm going to have to add a zero here. Let me get a different colored pen so I don't get messed up with the work I did above it. I can't take five away from zero, so I'm going to have to borrow one from the nine and make that an eight, and that becomes a ten. 10 minus 5 is 5, 8 minus 0 is 8, so now I'm at 1 and 85 hundredths, and that's going to be my next problem, 1 and 85 hundredths. Okay, hopefully I get a good number on this next roll. 2. I think I can go ahead and, whoops, and take away 2 tenths from this one, 2 tenths. So that would leave me with... 5, 8 minus 2 is 6, 1 and 65 hundredths. So that's what I'm working with for this next problem. I'm going to go ahead and write that down and roll again. Oh, I got a 1 this time. So I do believe that I'm going to stick with the tenths this time and take away. Oh, I am missing my tenths there. Here we go. Oh, I went to the wrong slide. Sorry, boys and girls. This is really hard to work with. There we go. Now, there we go. So I rolled a one, didn't I? So I'm going to take away one-tenth. That means that's going to subtract one-tenth. So I'm left with one and fifty-five hundredths. I only have two rolls of the dice left, so I'm hoping that I get some numbers that are bigger than that. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to have to go over here and get to my dice roller. And I got a three this time. So for this one, I'm going to, oops, it did it again. Sorry about that. 
there we go. This time I'm going to do three tenths again. Three tenths. So this time when I take three tenths away, I'm going to be left with five, two, and one. Oop, I'm getting closer to one. Remember, that's my goal. I want to get as close to one as I possibly can. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my number roller. I don't know why my computer has decided to give me trouble now, but we're going to work with it. There we are. So there we go. Go back to my dice roller. And I got a six. Ooh, that might be difficult, huh? All right, so now I have a six. What should I do with that six? If I take six tenths away, that's going to be less than one. So I think I'm going to take away six hundredths, right? If I take six away, I can't take six away from two. I'm going to have to borrow from this one, and that's going to be get less than one. So I'm going to do one and twenty-five hundredths minus six hundredths. So I cannot take six from five, so I'm going to borrow one from that. It's going to make it a one. Fifteen minus six is nine. One minus zero is one. And hopefully my partner got a number that's bigger than that or, or less than one, and then that would make me the winner. Okay, so that's how you play that game. Let's go ahead and go back to our lesson and see the wrap, what our synthesis is going to be. That's a fun little game we can play to help us learn. Describe a move that you could have made differently to change the outcome of the game. Well, I could have chosen a different number, tenths or ones, right? How is subtraction game the same as the addition game? You still had to think about the strategy, didn't you? You had to think about um, adding and subtracting decimals. I'm subtracting them starting with two, and when I was adding, I was adding um, starting with zero. Sometimes I have to break up a one or a tenth in the addition game, and sometimes I made a one or a tenth. How is subtraction game different? Well, we just talked about that. Which game did you prefer? I liked both of them. They were fun, although my computer was giving me trouble on the subtraction one. How is subtracting decimals the same as subtracting whole numbers? You have to, have to, have to pay attention to place value and make sure you're subtracting the digits with the same place value. Sometimes you have to decompose a unit and borrow. How is it different? There are more places to pay attention to, and I have to remember how many tenths are in a whole and how many hundredths are in a tenth. And sometimes I have to borrow. How is subtracting decimals the same as adding decimals? I have to think about place value in the very same way. The only difference is that I'm subtracting now instead of adding. So I have to decompose and um, carry, sometimes with addition, I have to borrow or decompose or compose new units. All right, here's our cool down. Almost done. So again, I'm going to have to pay really close attention to the place value and line up those digits in the right place value. That's in the ones and that's in the tenths. And then I can add a zero for right there. 7 minus 0 is 7. 5 minus 4 is 1. Make sure I make that decimal point nice and dark. 3 minus 1 is 2. And then I can check my work by adding, right? 7 plus 0 is 7. 4 plus 1 is 5. And 3 plus 1 is, I'm sorry, 2 plus 1 is 3. So I got the same thing that I started with, so I know that 2 and 17 hundredths is correct. All right, boys and girls, thank you for joining me on Lesson 14. I'm sorry about those computer troubles I was having. And I hope to see you again on Lesson 15.